Uh, anyone who wishes to record or photograph the meeting must first notify the chair, who then will notify the public for Mass Open Meeting Law, July 2010. Such audio or video recording may not interfere with the meeting. Uh, roll call, please. Ms. Mattencourt? Here. Mr. Shedd? Here. Mrs. Ribeiro? Here. Mr. Olivero? Here. Mr. Bergen? Yes. Mr. Toomey? Yeah. Dr. Marlin? Here. Public comment? Do we have any public comments as Mrs. Burnett explained at 3 p.m. today? Thank you. Mm -hmm. And regarding the acceptance of minutes of August 9 and the August 30th. I have a motion we accept the minutes for the August 9th meeting. Second. Um, can we do a roll call on that one, please? No. no just just All in favor. Um, all in favor. Aye. Any opposed? Um, motion to separate. Second. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from August 30th. Second. Um, and all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, we have a few reports here. Um, uh, you gotta hold the executive session minutes. Okay. Just to announce that too. Okay. No, um, we'll hold those executive session minutes until certain matters are completed. Um, next, going on to approval of bills. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion has it. Okay. Superintendent showed out. Thank you, Dr. Marlin. Again, uh, just to start out the year, um, I want to just really shout out the, the entire team, the staff, teachers, administrators. Uh, we've had some really good professional development uh, over the first few days, got the first few cycles off the ground. Um, and staff. Um, so I just I'm really just thankful for the for the start of the school year. And I wanted to take a minute uh, at the beginning of this meeting to acknowledge the hard work of our folks um, really in every classroom, all of our teaching assistants and, and people across the building. So very grateful for the first few weeks of the school year um, and very grateful to the team and other members who've kind of stepped up in some difficult situations to assume some additional tasks and responsibilities as we get this school year off the ground. So Shout out this month is again to the whole team as we finished up last year um, and looking forward to a great year. Watson, um, could we have an update on the summer projects, Mr. Arruda? Good evening, everyone. This, uh, this past summer is probably the most exciting summer I've certainly experienced here in the past five years here at Greater New Bedford. Uh, we had a lot of exciting things happen throughout the summer. Um, at Norm, here at the school, we were able to clean, uh, empty out, strip, wax, clean, put back together over 140 rooms in our building. Uh, be it classrooms, be it offices, be it shops, et cetera. And that's a, uh, a concerted effort by our entire staff, um, facility management-wise and with the help of IT. It's, it seems like every room has computers uh, in, in them now. And, and so truly it's a joint effort by both departments to get this done every year in and year out. Um, we had 13 rooms this year, uh, as an example, that actually changed. Uh, so one room went to another location, some staff went to this location. So at the end of that domino effect, we had approximately 13 rooms that got moved around in our building. And that meant cleaning out those rooms, that meant painting those rooms, that meant adding infrastructure into those rooms. At times, you're going to a room that only had, what, two, three uh, lines for a phone, as an example, but you're gonna put six staff members in there. So you'd have to run all the infrastructure into those rooms. 
So the cleaning of the 140, the 13 added rooms happened also this summer. We also had our students that were hired through the mass hire program. They came into the school and, and they do a marvelous job for us, the kids. The, the students from our school, uh, if you're going around the campus, you'll see all the yellow curbings, the speed bumps. They paint all of that during the summer. All the mulch that gets spread outside, they spread that during the summer. They do a lot of inside work once the weather, if the rain's outside. So that program evolved throughout the summer. So while all of that is happening, this happened for us. So again, I'm going to show you the presentation right now. Cosmetology. If you haven't had a chance to go to our cosmetology shop, please do before you go home. It is truly uh, one of the gems of our school right now. It's something that we should be very, very proud of. Our first meeting happened in this room here. I believe it was February of 2021 and where all the staff, all the teachers, uh, the administrator, myself, Mr. Weimer, everybody in that room. And that was meeting number one, where we got that, that design off the ground and everyone gave their opinions. And we worked that design together right to the end. We were able to build this project uh, over the course of this summer. Um, as soon as the seniors left, we came in to start the project. This is actually our cosmetology shop. If you look on that left side, um, that, that trench there was dug by hand because we couldn't get equipment into the school uh, during, during while school was in session. So that trench was dug by hand for drainage. On the right side, you'll see pictures already of the uh, electrical company in there running the wiring, the HVAC units, HVAC going in. On the left, you'll start seeing the floors being sealed. The, uh, the walls start going up on the right side, and that's an exciting time. Once you start seeing the walls going up, that was an exciting time for us. Now, the left side is, you know, it, it, it's truly amazing. As you're going through it, you'll see electricians working with painters, painters working with carpenters, carpenters are working with the plumbers, and everybody's in there, to, and everyone's going to get along to get this project done. We had uh, exactly eight weeks to get this project done. And there was no ifs, ands, or buts about it. We had to get it done because the teachers were going to come back in with the students at the end of August. You see pictures on the right, the ceiling there. And uh, this, this picture here on the bottom is special to me. Uh, that's the view out, my, out of my office for almost 10 weeks. That's a view that gave me anxiety day in and day out. And as the month turned to August, and I get questioned by the superintendent, so how's that project going? And I mean, oh boy. And this is what it looked like, but it's amazing how, you know, it was one step at a time, but all everything fell into place. This is what you get. Okay, this is what our cosmetology shop looks like now. State of the art, um, something that you would go into any salon around here and uh, our students deserve nothing but the best and they surely are getting here. And this, the, I believe the final picture, you can see already uh, teachers in the classroom. It's already being occupied by the students, and uh, we have a very minor punch list to do there. Uh, literally three or four items that need to be corrected. Uh, I don't see it taking another week or two, and those will be all set, and we can check this project completed, and we'll move on to the next one. Another project we did this summer, the main office. This one's special in another way. The previous one was, was something that went out to bid, had a lot of outside local contractors working on it. Every, everyone you see going forward is done by us in-house. This is the main office, and you get to see here, you'll see students working in there, and that's a special thing because these are things they'll never forget. You'll see Mr. Ford in there with, with, with the carpentry students working away, the floors getting pulled in, walls going up. Now, a project like this is, is one that gets designed in-house by, by our students. It's a project that gets uh, approved in-house and it gets built by our students and staff all in-house. That's the hallway to the left, um, going down the new hallway, the extended hallway uh, in the main office. By extending that hallway, we were able to move the two assistant principals. You can see both of their offices here. Both assistant principals are now located right outside uh, uh, the principal's office now. Part of those 
13 rooms that we moved around here. I'll give you a couple of examples so you can see. We have the co-op office there and the operations and compliance office, their new locations. Here's the director of EDI. Their office got completed this summer also. We moved it all in um, and that's looking very nice. Family Engagement Center. It's right beside the EDI, it's right down in J Block. Please take a, go down here, take a look at these offices. These, these locations look absolutely amazing. So this project is completed. Security Center. In order for us to keep the ball roll moving with future projects, we had to move our security center. As you know, the business office has moved over about a year and a half or whatever it was or two years ago. So that, that left that office area open. And so now that's where the security center is located. The top picture here, if you, if you, don't, recall, if you don't recall it, that used to be our business manager's office. And now it's their uh, conference room. Here you'll be able to see uh, a couple of stations, a couple of offices that were created. This is where our office official is located in there. Yes, you see Mountain smiling at you as you walk in. Welcome Center, another one of our projects. I love saying our projects because they're our projects. Uh, we're designed in-house again, built in-house, and, uh, and it was by students and staff, our CBTE teachers along with the students. So this is actually the beginning of the project. You can see everything getting divided up here. That's the pass-through. If, if you're familiar with the area now, that's the pass-through where all, all the uh, backpacks and et cetera go through. We labeled it on the inside here on the right side, you'll see Welcome Center. If you're coming in from the outside now, you'll see beautiful uh, Vegas gold letters that say Welcome Center up against the brown building. It stands out very nicely. Um, and if, if you manage to get inside the building and right up to the front desk, Sue Miles will be smiling at you right there, okay? And this has been a true success. It, it, it's worked famously. It allows um, the security center to uh, not only welcome people, but you know what? They stay contained in an area and they no longer come into the school safety wise. Uh, no one's wandering the school, no one's inside. Everyone's in that area there. They come in for a student, they wait there. They're gonna drop something off. There's a safe passageway, there's a slide there, whatever they need to bring to the student. So this has worked out famously. That's our last picture. So I just want to say, I, I need to shout out, uh, shout out a thanks to a, a few people, and I'm not going to mention no names, but just groups, because I don't want to miss anybody. Our facility management team, when it comes to the summer, we grow. We grow tenfold. We grow as a team. We, we have to. That's the only way we're able to get all of this done. That's the only way we can do it. Our custodial staff, first and foremost, thanks to them for all their hard work all summer long. Our maintenance team, my right hands, and almost all the projects here in the school. CBTE teachers, and I'm not going to name them because I know I'm going to forget one of them. So I don't want to forget any of them. They know who they are. Thank you. And especially our students, dozens of students that worked here throughout the summer in all of these projects. And finally, a special thanks for all her hard work goes out to Kathy Farris. Thank you very much. Has any questions? Just comment, Madam Chair. Again, um, many of us were here through the summer just to come to see, you know, Superintendent Watson, and, and we saw the chaos. You know, you know, like whoever's cleaned out an attic or cellar knows that it gets messy for us before we put together. But it's um, it's amazing what you guys accomplished this year. So from the committee. Thank you for your job as a leader to get to where you are. And with all that help, you did a great job. Yeah, I just want to know when we can make appointments for the Cosmic Talk. <laughs> I already have one. Oh, we, uh, Mr. Oliveira had a question. No, just, no, no not really a question. So but I think he was just signaling. Again, just uh, you had a bunch of key areas that were 
that were, uh, you know, on the chopping block there. So I, I can only appreciate your anxiety and uh, thank you for a job well done. Because, I mean, between the main office, cosmetology and, um, you know, the Welcome Center, you had your hands full. So uh, just a shout out to you and your team for an excellent job. Thank you. It just, uh, Zeb, why, let me just kind of parlay. So first of all, I can't convey my appreciation to the, to the folks uh, any more than I, I think I hope I have, Zeb. Uh, but we, you know, appreciate this public recognition of the work they've done. And, and Zeb and the team have already started to, I like to describe it, let's drop the ball and move and move forward. And so we're already looking at uh, going out to design around our new health center, which we expect to start in March. And we've started to plan for summer projects for um, whatever year we're going to next, 2023. Yeah. Uh, but the bottom line is um, everybody uh, worked tirelessly. And I, you know, I don't want to miss anybody's name either. Those, those teachers that came in after a really tough year we talked about in June, they were here every single day this summer. And there were moments where I went to Seb's office and I said on more than, probably more than once a day, is this gonna be done? <laughs> this has to be done. Uh, and those guys and, and, and kids were here every day uh, to make it happen. And so a true team effort, Zeb, great job leading the initiative and uh, you know, excellent, excellent work. On the 23. That's right. I, I like the fact of that a lot of the students and faculty now have ownership of these projects and they can say, I did that, you know, and the love it's as soon as they're part of it forever. Yes. yes. Thank you very much. Sure. Okay. Um, superintendent's weekly update. Please. Yep. In your packet uh, are the two weekly newsletters, uh, the last two from August 29th and September 6th. It will include uh, this week's um, in the packet next time. We're going to continue to do this every week. Uh, I get a lot of free feedback from the staff, which I'm appreciative of as well. Um, try to use that as a form, a one page form, just to kind of push out information every week um, to try to help help to improve communication. As you know, that's one of the strategic initiatives in the entry plan that we're going to be building into our next district improvement plan. So we're going to continue this practice uh, throughout the school year as well. And Mr. Gonzalez, we have our student report. Always looking forward to this. Thank you. How are you guys doing today? Good. I know it's a rainy day. Y'all have made it. Every single student, every single school committee meeting I've been to is raining. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a test. It's a test. Okay. So, this is what's, <laughs> <laughs> so, what's been going on uh, so far in the new school year. So, for the first week of school, the freshmen had their orientation. Now, this was a day that they came with their parents and they got to learn the culture of our school. And they, there was also tours that were held by the National Honor Society members. So it was a good day for freshmen to come, feel the environment, and get used to it. Um, then on the first Tuesday, right, of the school year, seniors came and we had our senior pre-party. So it was um, a gathering that we had at 5.45 a.m., right? I know it was early, but a lot of kids came. Uh, there was Corner Hill games going on. Some kids brought football. Um, there was a lot of food going around, too. So it was a really good time. It was a great way to start off the year. And I think it went really good. Mr. Williams was there. He was very um, proud of it, too. And it was all last minute, so it turned out pretty well. Uh, what's next? So the Lady Bears volleyball team, they just um, made a trip to Universal Studios. So during their time in Orlando, the girls enjoyed team bonding and practice with competitive schools. And um, overall, the Lady Bears volleyball team, they grew and they're excited for the upcoming season. Um, and last week, each class of sophomores, juniors, and seniors, they had their class meetings. And during the meetings, we got to hear from key people in our school just to kind of have a successful school year. They were really beneficial. Um, also, during the first the first week, we had the seniors had their class of 2023, the 2023 photo. So basically, we got outside, we all lined up into a big 23, and we took a picture. And this is in the yearbook too. And apparently, this is a tradition. I asked my mom if they did this when she was a senior, and they did. So this keeps going on, and it's a great um, addition to the yearbook too. Um, also, um, on Monday which was yesterday, club signups went out. So there's a series amount of clubs that students can join, and a lot of kids have been signing up. So we hope that this is a great year, not only for sports, but for clubs too. A lot of kids know how to play music. A lot of kids are into, um, I don't know, let's say playing card games, right? Whatever, there's a club for every student here. So it's really cool that we have those opportunities. And here's some important dates. So tomorrow we are having our first student council meeting. We're going to be talking about homecoming. We're going to be talking about our pep rallies coming up. So it's going to be a great meeting. Next month we can fill you in what goes on there. Um, homecoming is on October 8th. 
since. Um, there's not a date that I have for the prep rally yet. And then the seniors will be having a fundraiser, which is a colorthon um, fundraiser on October 16th, which is a Sunday at 11.30 a.m. And basically, like I said last month, the colorthon is a race that people from the community to take part in. Um, and it's a great way, one, to stay in shape, and two, to get around with people in the community, right? Um, also, this is something that's brand new. So there, this year, we are starting, we're launching the Student Advisory Committee. So this is a group of students who provide insight of what is going on within the student body to our school su superintendent, Mr. Watson. And when the committee um, meets, right, they basically go over some strengths and some weaknesses in the school. So an email to some students, right, to fill out an application will be going out this week. And then the list of the finalized students will be emailed to Mr. Watson. And we have our first meeting the last Monday of this month. And um, one more announcement, the BPA officers will have their first meetings tomorrow. If you don't know what BPA is, it's Business Professors of America, and they compete at a serious amount of competitions. Um, I did BPA last year, and I made it in Texas. It was really fun, a good experience. So they're going to be having their meeting uh, to plan for their trip to California if we make it in nationals. So wish us luck in our planning, and that's all I have for today. Thank you for your time. Um, next speaker coming up, I don't know, I'm sorry. I'm trying to back that chance. <laughs> Good job. Ah, sense of humor. It's good. Um, next, we have new business. And um, oh, did anyone have any questions for the student rep? Good job. Yeah, excellent job. Thank you. Um, new business is next, and uh, the superintendent has his smart goals. It's included in the packet. And I'm looking for a recommendation as to how the motion to follow recommendation approved. Second. All in favor? Thankfully, that was going to be a tough act to follow in SMART. <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, we're going to pass right through. Yep. Packet, we also have the employee handbook here has been compiled by a few staff members. Yeah. It looked to me, it looks exceptional. Um, could I have a, uh, a move to, uh, make a motion to, uh, accept this through the handbook as written. Second. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The, the staff, uh, okay. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Um, next we have the updated organizational chart. Move to approve recommendation. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion uh, moves forward. Um, that is an awesome organizational chart. I told Mr. Watson just a little bit too small. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Get some bigger paper and find out how to copy it. But that's right, how we right. work on that. Large every part because <laughs> it's close up. Those are getting some. <laughs> um, okay, so next we, um, so we have to vote on the organizational chart. Just, I think we just did, right? We're good. Okay, we're all set on that. Yeah. I'm throwing myself off. That's okay. Second. Um, and the, um, admissions policy subcommittee, um, superintendent Watson, could you yes. speak to that? Please. So I think what's important at this point is for us, as I mentioned to the chair, that we form a subcommittee on admissions policy. Uh, obviously, this continues to be uh, an issue that we are pretty aggressively looking at. Our freshman class was the first that we admitted under a revamped admissions policy approved by this committee last December. Um, we are in the final stages of collecting the last SACID numbers that are coming from uh, seven districts, which pretty much gives the identification of all those students. That is what we report as part of our student information management system filing in October. Uh, what will be important is for us to look at the demographic student data that's created as a result of the revamped policy, both from the revised selective criteria for those 500 students, as well as the 65 students who are admitted uh, by the lottery. Um, so what I'd like for us to do, um, and I am in conversations, I'll say it with the, with the folks in the department, right? Because the regulatory change is in effect for October 1, uh, September 13. I think what's important is that we get a subcommittee of this group together to help be part of that conversation with district leadership team members or as we start to disaggregate this, this data. And we're very close. We've already done some preliminary work on that. Um, so I want to share that with members of the committee as we contemplate 
the next steps for us uh, to take internally in drafting of emissions policy for next school year. This is now something as required by the DESE regulations that we need to do annually. Um, and I have to sign that and attest to, to that process being completed. So it's my hope that tonight we can form a subcommittee and that we can begin that work at some point uh, in the next week or so uh, to take a look at, at some of that information from the class of 2026. Chair, I make a motion that we form a admission subcommittee. All in favor? Aye. Motion passes. So, some, yeah, some members. Yeah, I would love to have a conversation. <laughs> Thanks, Cindy. As a chair, you may want to be on that. If you don't, if you. Mr. Shank. <laughs> <laughs> no, if you don't, I, I will volunteer, but I don't know if as a chair you want it to be on it. It's a, your call. You have a lot of things going on. Yeah. Yeah. So it's your, your call. I, I, I will be, but if you want to be as a, as a chair, I'm okay with it. You take that on, Mr. Shea. That would be I would great. ask me on that committee. Perfect. From Dartmouth. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Someone so, from Haven in New Bedford, one more from New Bedford, and one from Haven. Tell me, Mr. Oliveira, if you're on the That's how I get on most of my things. <laughs> we volunteer, volunteer, right? Uh, the same thing. I would yield to Randy being the senior behavior rep, but if uh, I would certainly do it as well. I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, so we're. It doesn't matter to me either way. I. Um... I'd like to be on it, but if we do it, that's perfectly well, fine. We normally have two reps. Are you on it? He's yeah. on, yeah. So the, why are you two? Flip a coin. Flip a coin. <laughs> There's no way I'm flipping that coin. You guys are going to have to do that yourself. I would like to, but if you. Flip a coin. That might be the fair way. People are fighting not to be on a subject. Yeah, wow. <laughs> yeah. You're looking for two. You both want to be on. Kim's on it also. Oh, yeah. Kim's going to have time on it. Yeah. Yeah. That's, the, that's the other thing. So when, when would this I, start? I think, so I think we're going to need to start soon, but I think, you know, I'll make our team available at the time that's conducive for members of the committee. I think it's important that the committee is involved in this. So those of us that... On our end, we're, we're going to meet when it when it works for you. If that's in the morning, it's in the morning. If it's at night, then it's at night. I mean, we're going to do what, what we have to do uh, to get the four members. I think that's real. That's a critical piece of this. Just so again, not, nothing against Brett or Rita. I, I'm just looking at the whole idea of the change of the vision policy was equity that you look at it. And I think right now we have a, a female, a male, a male. And I think, you know, if Rita's on it, you know, I'll give you two females, two males. And I'll, I'll also two females, two males. Yeah. You got two females, two males. Yeah. Same my, no, my, and, also, <laughs> and also minority. So I think I, I, I'm not against you for it by any means, but I think that will show that we're thinking of that moving forward. Yeah, I would, you know, I have a problem with Rita. I, I know she'll do a good job. No, I recommend Rita. For Mr. Oliveira, Mr. Ribeiro, Mr. Shea, and Ms. Ben. Chairman of Science Committee, yeah. So, following slate, and yeah. if the committee could just um, give me the go ahead on whether they'd like to move forth with that slate. Yes, you in favor? Yeah, you're fine. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Next is the after dark program. There's something in your packet that explains that program. Maybe. Um, so what's on screen? Okay. Yeah. Maybe Mr. Watt, if you could give us the compressed narration of that, that would be great because I know it is a big endeavor. <laughs> All right, so we will be working in collaboration with New Bedford Public Schools to expand student access to Chapter 74 programs. This will be a two-year cohort 
15 New Bedford High students take their academics at New Bedford High and receive over 900 hours of Chapter 74 training here in our carpentry program from three to six daily. These students will receive their diploma from New Bedford High and their Chapter 74 certification from Greater New Bedford Book Tech. Uh, the program will not affect the school's day funding at all because the uh, additional Chapter 74 funding from the Bedford Public Schools. Um, additionally, they will also be eligible for co-op in the second half of their senior year. So it's a great program for them. It's great for us. And we'd like to expand more programs like that as we move forward. This is part of the ongoing conversation around admissions and providing greater access to the region's uh, students for vocational education. We're going to pilot this program for the next two years. If it goes well, um, you know, we'll look to expand that program provide greater access. Um, I am meeting with other communities as well uh, in the area in the coming weeks to discuss uh, similar partnerships. Um, I, I think this is an important endeavor for us if we uh, continue to do what we say we're going to do uh, with the folks uh, in Malden and, and talk about access issues for, for vocational education. Right. And, and also, uh, just one more thing, it's not just we started a program, we actually had to apply to the state to start a new program. So we had to go through all the hoops to start a new program to start this program. To me, it's what is the criteria for a student to apply? They're going to follow our our um, admissions policy. It's going to be a junior student for two years, junior then senior. Mr. Jurgen, will that affect night school at all? Above? No, uh, it, it ends at six o'clock. Night school okay. starts after, so it's actually what the governor and everyone else wants to keep the building going straight through. Basically, this is discussed maybe two years ago before maybe even COVID, the same exact uh, program, and it wasn't favorably looked at at the time. So I'm excited that this is happening because I think it's much needed and it'll give us an opportunity to work together instead of. Yeah, I was just going to echo what Rita said, living in both worlds, you know, being a former employee at New Bedford School Department and being on school committee with Vogue, I love the bridging of the gap. Um, I think it gives so much opportunity for our students that I continue to advocate for who need more vocational training program. But I was happy to see in the MOU, not only the hours, but also you get that chapter 74 certification. And for me, like that was the biggest sell. Because if you just got the hours and hey, this is great experience, but to come out of that with that certification at the end mm -hmm. makes the whole program worthwhile. So I really appreciate that. You know, appreciate that aspect. That's of it. why the nine hundred hours. It's not yeah. rope take light. It's actually. exactly. I, I, that's. <laughs> yeah, but they'll still spoke to this when he came down, didn't he? But they'll still receive the New Bedford High School diploma. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Shank. Yeah, I'm supportive of it. I'm just. Seeing people on the TV from that might be watching this and they're saying that, you know, you're doing this with the Bedford. You had just mentioned, which I is the future conversations with Diamond and Fairhaven also. Yep. And so, uh, as the sending districts have reached out for conversations, as I promised the committee, I will engage in all those conversations. So, uh, not wanting to call out 1 of the other 2 communities. I am, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll meet with both if they request to meet with both. And I, like I said, I, I think I think it's great. And it, the word pilot means you you don't open up the doors with everything. You kind of pilot with it. And and New Bedford is one that we pilot with most of our programs with because of numbers of kids. So I'm for it. I think it's great. Some residents are hearing, and I will be you know looking forward. Hopefully that with a success pilot, that then the Dartmouth and the Haven students will have the same opportunity down the road. Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> Transportation. So, uh, New Bedford Public is. Go ahead, Pam. We have handled it. Paying for the uh, the transportation, and yeah. uh, New Bedford Public Schools will reimburse. That's right. For the transportation, and they'll take a six o'clock regular buses yes. anyway. This will just provide a bus from New Bedford Public Schools to us, and then the students that participate will take our six p.m. athletic buses to their neighborhood uh, stops. Any other questions, comments? Um, we need a motion. We would need a motion. I'd like to have make a motion to approve the after dark program. Second. Second. Any uh, comments at this time? Questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 
Marlon will also sign. I've signed this. Once we have this agreement, we're going to send it to New Bedford for Mr. Anderson and the uh, mayor's signature. Okay, um, moving right along here. Um, out of state travel uh, for student athletes. We'll turn that one up. Yeah. Second. <laughs> we have Mr. Methia here. This, any questions, you know? <laughs> I was going to trot him out to that microphone, so it's all right. We'll, we'll give him a rain check. He's going forward. Motion is second, so just keep going. Keep going. Um, okay. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, right. we need to vote. Favor, please. Aye. 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 Um, okay. Um, now we'd like to move to G, which is approved proposed LPN salary scale. Yep. So just in your packets is an adjusted proposed LPN salary scale. The LPN position um, is funded out of the SS3 grant. Um, we've posted for that job. Uh, this is at least the second posting, I think maybe the third uh, posting. So I want to adjust the salary range a little bit um, to see if we can't attract a, a high quality applicant for the position. So that's what you see in front of you. LPNs we have or is so that we, grant Yeah, we have zero. Uh, we have four full-time nurses. We're adding an LPN. Uh, to that office so for really up to 18 months. Thank you. And there's some of those schedules, you know, different different hours, Mr. Watson, or? So, nope, ner the nurses' schedules are, are 7.30 to 3 at this point. The LPN schedule would be determined once we hire the person, but we're not envisioning, you know, there's not a real need after 3 o'clock for the nurse. Okay. Uh, so having them in at the regular schedule is pretty much Okay, uh, it's 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 our preferred approach unless okay. there's a need for a specific job. We do have a couple positions in the district now where hours outside are advantageous to that particular position, but um, when possible, we're not looking to change the hours. I'll make a motion to accept the uh, pay schedule for the LPNs. Okay, and uh, what well, question, please? Now, if the after doc program, we are going to have students in here in the afternoon, right? We're going to need to we, make an adjustment. We don't have a nurse on duty at the farm, so I would say. Yeah, we're going to have to make an adjustment. Okay. I think that's as before we hire in the, the hours, you may want to consider having that covered. Thank you. Um, okay. So um, could I have a motion, please? I have a motion. You have a second. A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aries, um administrative assistant to the academic and vocational directors. Thank you, Dr. Marlin. In your packet is a job description proposed for the administrative assistant to the director of academic and vocational programs. Um, this position uh, would be categorized as a grade four position on our existing scale. Um, the funding for that position would be currently allocated in a position that's vacant for this school year from the administrative assistant to the executive director. For operations compliance, so there is a net zero impact to the FY22 23 budget. As I promised, each position that I bring to you folks, I will clarify exactly how that position will be funded. Uh, so there's full transparency in that process. With your approval, we will move to post this position tomorrow uh, and keep it open for a couple of weeks and, and move as quickly as possible to make sure that we have support uh, for our academic and vocational directors as they begin their charge. Okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. Motion carries. We're going to uh, surplus equipment, including in your packet, is the backup material for surplus equipment. All the motion to make a motion to approve. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Um, we have in our packet the report on personal appointments, retirements, resignations um, to be received and placed on file. Motion to receive and place on file. 
Second. Um, I'll, I'll move. That was A and B. Yes. Are we doing them separately? Nope. No, oh, you do them as a group. Yeah. Okay. So we'll just keep it the way it is. So, um, retirements and resignations, all one package. Okay. Um, all in favor? Communications. Oops. Yep. Communications. Um, communication from Doran Whittier. Whittier, yep. Do we need any kind of explanation of that or is that um, supposed to work? That is our on call architectural firm. The three years from the first um, contract that we had was up. So we had requested for proposals and we reviewed them myself and Mr. Aruda. Reviewed, I believe we received eight um, and narrowed it down to Dorian Whittier, and that's who we're asking the committee to continue our contract with for the next three years. So we've had. And that's who we use for these projects as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. Forward committee um, discussion. Um, discussion. Just uh, one, if I may. Um, again, I, you know, you don't want to be a dead horse, but I, I think Mike, um, Lieutenant Washington, you did a nice job tonight with, you know, you know, talking about a shout out to all the people that did summer. And um, I know we had a tough year last year, and I think I just want to say that end of the year with, with full contracts, you know, through the GMBEU. With the summertime with the it seems like above and beyond what went on in this building i don't see another building in the state that could have done that job but we got records but and now i i see what i've heard from you and other members of the school in the last week and a half that the positive attitude of the staff coming back with professional development and all that i, I just felt i had to say it one time because i i know it's one of those things where you know, sometimes we don't hear it, or sometimes we don't say it enough. But I just wanted to tell to, to everyone that we all need a good year. We all need to look at the positive outreach. And it sounds like everybody on board, from the secretaries to our professionals to technicians to, it seems like everybody understands and they want the same thing we want. And hats off to them. So, let's have a mind. You know, recently I said there will be some bad days, but there will be a hell of a lot of good, good days more than bad. So let's keep our hats on. Let's go forward. We're all here for one reason: make the school the best school for in Massachusetts. And uh, I think we're on the right track. And you know, GNBEU fought hard, and, they, and I respect what they did last year. I think right now, let's move forward together. So. I'm excited about the year. Excited about where it started, and um, I, I have grandchildren in almost every district in this area, so I, I I keep my ears to the ground about everything. But I don't think anybody can say that they've had what we've had started out this year. So the people that are here tonight, you know, I, I, again, let's let's move forward. Thank you for what you've done, and again, I think the leadership by you, Superintendent Watson. Is setting the bar high enough, and Principal Williams, I think you know, I'm hearing good things. I'm hearing good things. Keep it going because I think we're all in a better place than we were a year ago last September. Thank you. I appreciate. Um, I appreciate that. And uh, you know, as I've said, it, it, it these are hard times, and you know, our folks are doing. We know they're doing everything that they can, uh, and and doing a great job every day. Um, our job, as we've been talking about during our professional development, is to support folks in that work and to try to give them the tools and things that they need um, to do what it is we're asking them to do, but also to do what they know is in their heart is best for kids. And so it's an ongoing process. You're right. We will have some tough days. And I and my hope is that we'll have more better days than tough days. And what I've, I've said to folks here and, and folks outside, and I'll say it to everybody who meets me, the door will always be open. We can always talk about those things that that um, that come before us, and and 
that's that's how we're going to get up tomorrow, and that's what we're going to do it each and every day. So uh, what I said in the outset, I meant right. Uh, this is not an easy job today, and it's not just at New Bedford Volk Tech, right? I, I I have a lot of friends in this business, and so what our people are doing every single day is is really hard right now, uh, and they're coming every day to do it. So when I say that I'm grateful for that, uh, that's what I'm feeling. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, I'm very grateful for that work each and every day on behalf of our kids, and I'm grateful for our leadership team, folks that are in the trenches, getting in there every day to try to support that work. And we appreciate it. Thank you. Mr. Jurgen, you know if I saw your hand up or not, no. Okay. All right, Mr. Tomey. No, I just like to echo Mr. Mm -hmm. Shea's comments relative to the staff and welcome back and positive atmosphere. In addition to that, uh, Congratulations on the work that's done by Mr. Ruda. But in addition to that, I would like to call out Mr. Brian Methia for the fine job he did in promoting the banquet and establishing the banquet with the girls team in summer. Very excellent job, very well put together. And I just want to say that um, I feel really honored to participate in this school committee. I think it's a great mix of people and you know, a young man that's willing to step up to the plate. Um, great administration. So I look forward to to a, a great year. Um, I know that um, you know we all have our heart in it. We want the best. And um, thank you so much. Thank you. Um, so I need a vote uh, to adjourn, please. There is no executive session. Motion to adjourn. Second. Favor? No roll call. Right? No roll call. Not, not executive. No, only an executive. Okay. We're okay. Roll call. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.